Okay, welcome to this presentation on Snowflake and our partner, dBeaver SQL Client. Snowflake does come with its own user interface and SQL Client, all web-based, that you can use to execute SQL. Uh, some clients, though, do prefer a desktop client, and there are some additional benefits or capabilities within the dBeaver client that might be of interest as well. So as part of this tutorial, I will be connecting to Snowflake using the dBeaver SQL Client. Uh, we're going to use some of the modeling capabilities within dBeaver as well to model some of our existing data that's already in our data warehouse. Uh, and we'll also show you how to load and query data through the dBeaver IDE as well. Okay, so if I just switch over to dBeaver. First, you'll be presented with uh, a connections tab. So you want to create a new connection to your Snowflake database. So a choice of Snowflake. You just want to enter your credentials for your account. You will need to enter a default database and then your username and password. And once you hit test connection, it's going to try and connect. And it's also, as part of this step, querying all the metadata that exists within Snowflake uh, so we can pre-populate some of the other fields within here. So it's going through all the system tables um, and getting a list of all the databases and, and warehouses that are available. Should take a couple more seconds. Okay, so now the uh, warehouse schema is full. Now a warehouse in Snowflake is the compute part of Snowflake, so we have the separation of storage and compute. So a virtual warehouse is the compute, and you can choose different compute clusters. We'll just choose the extra small for the purpose of this demo. Uh, schema is optional as well, but you can choose a default schema as well. If we click finish, we can see that the database has been created. Now, We've got a full schema browser within dBeaver. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our retail database, set that as the active database. And we're going to go through to the DWH schema, get a list of tables in there. What we can do straight away in terms of modeling our data uh, within dBeaver is uh, if we double click on our main fact table, and this is a pretty standard star schema for a uh, retailer, Click on a yard diagram, and it's uh, going down to the database and finding all the foreign keys and connections. So that's out of the box. If you've defined foreign keys within Snowflake, dBeaver is going to query that metadata, and it's going to come back with an ER diagram. So you've already got some documentation done out of the box. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, a bespoke ER diagram. So let's create our own new ER diagram. We're going to use the demo database. Let me tick that. And we're going to um, model all the tables that exist within, um, within this database. Oops. So we've got to give it a name. Call it our retail ER diagram. Actually, we can just select the header there. And that should get all the tables within the DWH schema and views. So that's going through the Snowflake metadata and loading all those objects. So you can see the star scheme is relatively uh, the same as what we saw when we queried the retail item fact. But what we do now see is that whoever created this database forgot to define a foreign key relationship between location dim and retail item fact. So what we can do within dBeaver is actually define that relationship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on retail item fact, go to the properties tab, and look at the foreign keys that have been defined. So we can see they did define between product date and customer. There was a location or a store dimension as well that they've forgotten to define. So what we can do is define a new key. So we'll select the location dim table. Uh, it's already done the mapping 
because of the, the similarity in the names there. So that's great. Just click OK. What you want to do is you want to persist that though. So if we click Save, DBeaver tells us what it's going to send to the database, which is an alter table statement and add a constraint. We're going to persist that in the database. Great thing is you don't only need to update your documentation. So if we um, refresh that, sorry, just re click back in. It's now made the connection between location, dim, and item fact. So a really easy way to start modeling your data. Um, and you can save that documentation and export that uh, for your wiki or for your internal documentation. So that's the ER diagram part of Snowflake. Uh, sorry, DBeaver. Now we will just do uh, run some queries on the database. So we're going to open up a script that I've written earlier. Um, so we're going to create a table within the uh, test database, so I'm just going to change from the retail database uh, to my test DB. We're going to create a table called housing sales uh, with the following columns defined. Okay, so now we have an empty table within there. So if we browse through, we can find that housing sales table data. We can import data directly from my computer into that table. So our source is going to be a CSV file. We're going to choose, whoops, we're going to choose housing sales data from 2018. Uh, the comma column delimiter is a comma, so that's all good to go. Uh, we'll just click next. So it gives you a bit of a preview of what's going to happen. So that's a good way to determine if you've got your structure correct. Um, and we're going to commit after a million transactions, a million rows. Click finish. And what you can see in DBeaver is it, it is loading that data, so it's exporting it from the CSV. Data transfer is complete in five seconds. We can just do a quick select star from that table as well, so we can start to see the data that we've just loaded. Um, we can also see how many records were loaded as part of that, so 10,000 records. So using DBeaver to load data is, is fine for small, small files. Um, it does use JDBC as a, as a mechanism to insert that data. Um, but what will happen, particularly as your data volumes grow, you may have some large sort of files that you want to load, um, and we have a bulk loader to achieve that. So DB is great for loading small files that you want to do some quick analysis on, but if you do get up into the billions or, or large volumes of rows, you may want to use our bulk loader capability. What that would entail is actually moving the data to S3 or to Azure Blob Storage, depending on which cloud provider you're with, uh, and then issuing a copy into command to load that. So using FileZilla, I can connect to my S3 bucket. Just hit connect. Snowflake Academy, I'm gonna, I have a bucket named in S3. <coughs> Oops. Now the 2017 files are a lot larger. So we're talking millions of rows. So we're just going to transfer that across. So this is moving it from my computer into uh, an S3 bucket in Amazon, which is what I'm going to load from. And then Snowflake's going to load that really quickly um, because it's going to use our, our bulk load command. So just wait for that to finish. Okay, so that's now in S3. Now the copy into command, the syntax is available on the Snowflake documentation, but effectively uh, you need to create a stage, which we've done, which references that bucket. Um, you create a file format to tell it it's a CSV with, pipe, uh, with comma separators, and then you give it a pattern. So we're giving it that housing sales 2017 file name pattern. Then if we issue that copy into command, this should be relatively quick, and this is going to load a lot more than, than the previous load. So we've just loaded now over a million records in the same amount of time. We can do a quick count star of that to verify that we've loaded one million records. So that's a way to bulk load, still using DBeaver, but behind the scenes using our bulk loading capability. Any questions, please contact ourselves or our partner DBeaver. Um,